What's up guys, it's Weston here. So today is benchmarking day and we're going to be benchmarking the Ryzen 7 system I've recently put together. So this is a thousand dollar, thousand pound system. So if you've not seen part one where I'll show you pretty much everything that went into this build, then that will be in the cards and in the description too. But anyway, in this video, we're going to be looking at some synthetic benchmarks, some real world rendering tests, we're going to be looking at some handbrake, some temperature tests, some noise tests, and pretty much everything is coming up uh, in a few minutes. So anyway, before we do that, if you've not seen part one, here's a quick list of all the stuff that went into this build. And also one final note before we get into that is that this CPU is not overclocked. It's just running at stock speed. So hopefully I will be able to do a separate video on overclocking just to see if it does make any improvements and I'll do a comparison between these results and the overclock results and then we'll get to see obviously if overclocking is worth it but these for now are just stock. So anyway let's just quickly run over the parts that are in this build and then we'll jump into some benchmarks. So anyway for the uh, CPU we've gone Ryzen 7 1700. For the cooler, we've got the uh, Spire cooler, which is just a stock cooler. It's pretty much everything you need out of the box. You don't need to buy a third party one because it really works. And I definitely think Intel could learn a thing or two about including a good stock cooler with their CPUs. I know they probably won't, but AMD have done it and they've done a brilliant one. No complaints about the cooler at all. Motherboard, we've gone for the MSI X370 SLI Plus. I'm reviewing this pretty soon and it is a solid motherboard, but again, I'll cover that in the review. Then we've gone for the RAM, which is 16 gigabytes of Kingston HyperX 2133 megahertz. Then we get onto the graphics card and this is the MSI RX 484 gigabyte. Again, I'm gonna be doing a separate video on this, but that is the graphics card we've got. It's good for 1080p and 1440p as well. And it just matches the red and black and white uh, color scheme of this build. Then we get onto the storage configuration and we've gone for a 240 gig SSD from SanDisk. It's just uh, an old reliable SSD plus. It works well, it's fast, no issues with it at all. Hard drive, we've gone for the Seagate Firecuda one terabyte. Now I would have gone mechanical, but I've been having a good time with these uh, hard drives. So I thought including one of these in these build would be good. It just seems to work a little bit faster than an old style mechanical drive. Then we get on to the power supply and this is just an old 750 watt OCZ power supply I had. Now I would recommend the Corsair CX550M for this build. It'll give you plenty of headroom for overclocking the CPU and it's also semi-modular as well unlike the one I have so there's going to be much less cable clutter. Then for the case, we've gone for the Cooler Master Masterbox 5, a brilliant case. It's a ATX size and it's just brilliant. Good cable management, it's solidly made, plenty of space to work in, and it's just a solid case. So anyway, that is pretty much all the stuff that's in this build. Uh, but before we jump into the benchmarks, I'd just like to thank MSI for loaning me the Ryzen CPU, the motherboard and the graphics card. Anyway, so now we've got that out of the way, let's jump in and take a look at the benchmarks.
And there you have it guys, that is pretty much everything. So you've seen the temperatures, you've seen the benchmarks, you've heard the noise sample, and I'm actually pretty impressed at how quiet this system is. Now, I did notice that a donut that I left the side panel off when I did the noise test. So just keep in mind that this system is actually quieter than what the video suggests because I don't know what happened. I just forgot to put the side panel on. So yeah, that's my fault. I will openly admit that. So yeah, also the results are pretty impressive from the Ryzen system. Uh, we've got some really impressive Cinebench scores. It actually beat out some Xeon processors, which I'm pretty impressed at. And remember, the, these are just stock speed. They're not even overclocked. So yeah, I highly recommend this uh, system. So then for uh, gaming, it's pretty impressive too. So 1080p gaming, perfectly fine. High settings, no problems. 1440p, I'd recommend looking at the 8 gig variant of this card rather than the 4 gig. It just seems to be a little bit better than uh, this one at 1440p. But this is still pretty capable for the price too. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with this system. I've got some more videos coming up very soon. I'm going to be doing a editing test. So I'm going to be putting a 4K video together on this and I'm just going to be seeing how good it is for editing. I'm also going to be hopefully testing the overclock like I've mentioned already and also I've got some other videos planned but I'm keeping that quiet for now. So anyway, that is pretty much it for this one. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already for the rest of this uh, Ryzen series and also pretty much everything else I do on the channel too. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you all on the very next one.